Hello everybody, welcome back to Zombie Zoology. I'm Zombie Zebra and in today's continuation of my week of zebra ramblings, I'm talking about the case for shortcuts. The idea of taking the easy way out and the idea of taking shortcuts is heavily frowned upon in our society, which as you know, revolutionary and I'm sure antagonistic as this sounds, our society being a capitalist one is largely based around valuing people based on their output and therefore work ethic. So things like taking shortcuts are frowned upon. There are phrases like taking the easy way out, which are all negatively connotated. And I don't think that's fair because growing up, there were lots of things that I stopped myself from doing because I felt like they were the easy way out. Even on things that didn't really make sense, just because I had this mentality of, you know, do they do it right or do it twice, like do it the right way. And that's not okay. I, I learned this when I, I, I'm going in to potentially go to a rehab facility to help kind of rehab my body after years of, you know, ehlers Danlos and joints slipping and muscles weakening and all that kind of stuff. And they asked if I had difficulty walking up the stairs. And I very sheepishly said, well, normally I crawl up the stairs because if no one's looking, what I will do is crouch down and all fours go up the stairs. And whenever I'm with someone and I do it, they're like, oh, Ruthie's so silly, but it's not something I do because I'm a hilarious person. It's something I do because my back and my legs are pretty weak and having stress on four limbs is easier than having stress on two and when I said that I was very sheepish I was like well normally I crawl up the stairs and they took it totally fine they were like oh good that's an accommodation I was so ready to be embarrassed by them I was so ready for them to like laugh at me and be like oh that's cute or something but no they took it as a totally legit form of accommodating yourself and that's when I realized there are so many things that I'm hesitant to do around people because I'm so afraid of like looking silly or looking like I'm taking shortcuts. Like for example, at, my, at the first job I worked, I was a hostess and I would always need to steal a bar stool to have behind my, um, my hostess stand because I had to, I wouldn't even fully sit down. I just, I needed to be up against something. Okay, that's a lie. I would fully sit down, especially we were slow sometimes. So when we were slow, I'd fully sit down. But um, it never stopped me from doing my job. I got up as soon as customers came in. I walked into the table. I was lovely. I was also the only hostess there for a while. So like, throw in some shade your direction, boss man, if you ever watch this. But um, you know, my, my boss gave me some trouble about it. You know, he, he very clearly didn't want me to have a bar stool behind there. It came across as somewhat unprofessional. Because um, in America, we kind of have this idea that sitting is somehow lazy. Um, in Europe, cash out, cash checkout people tend to sit. Like, it's a thing in other parts of the world where we aren't so unreasonable. But, uh, you know, we kind of always had this back and forth where I would move a bar stool behind my, my, and it's not like all the bar stools were taken. They weren't all taken. This would be at like three in the morning, three in the afternoon. There were not full bar stools at that point. Um, but I would grab a bar stool and he would put it back and I would take it and he would put it back. I didn't have a diagnosis at this point so I couldn't say to him, you know, I have ehlers danlos Syndrome, I really need this. But I felt bad about needing it and part of that is probably because I knew he didn't want me to have it but I genuinely, like, I also felt like I was being lazy by sitting and I thought that whole summer I really thought I was like the most lazy person in the world because I would need like breaks so often. I'd have to sit down so often. But now, looking back, I feel a lot better about it because I think like, man, like I accommodated myself so well that whole summer and I got through working in food service for a whole summer as a chronically ill, and as an undiagnosed chronically ill person because I was so good at accommodating myself. So changing the language that I've been using in my head from shortcuts to accommodations has been so nice. It's so, much better to think of yourself as somebody really good at accommodating yourself versus somebody who takes shortcuts and takes easy way outs. Obviously there's some stuff in life that you shouldn't take shortcuts on and you should do fully the first time. Um, but there are lots of places in life where it's 
totally reasonable to take shortcuts, and those shortcuts are called accommodations. And for chronically ill people, they are wonderful things. So to everybody out there with a chronic illness, I highly recommend, even if it's just changing the language, even if you don't, even if all you do is start congratulating yourself on accommodating yourself well, even if you don't change your actions, I promise you'll feel better about it. So that is my case for taking shortcuts, or as I am now calling it, accommodating yourself. And until next time, hoard those spoons, guys.